Okay, so chakras uh, two and three, I think we were talking about before uh, my recorder ended there. So let me go ahead and just do that cat and cow posture for the second and third chakras. So hands and knees again, table posture, and cow, like a cow's belly, is this part of the posture. You're letting your belly be soft down by the earth. Take a nice big inhale. And then as you exhale, you're pulling that navel to the spine and breathing out. So breathe in when you're a cow and out when you're a cat, like a black Halloween cat, pulling that navel to the spine. And then in and out. In and out. Feels good on the back, too. Another time or two. And connecting with those second and third chakras. Um, your creativity. Your exams, when we can. Staying in touch with uh, keeping those parts of our body healthy. And... Um, listening to fight or flight okay now fourth chakra as you can see basic existence up here now um, we're ascending um, in a number of respects so fourth chakra is the heart chakra uh, color associated with it is a uh, powdery pink kind of like the symbol for breast cancer very appropriate right um, or a hunter green a deep deep green color and this has to do, of course, with your cardiovascular, everything that we have going on, the beating of our own heart, also has to do with our ability to love and be loved. So in order to open up this chakra, what we want to do is um, just what are known as some chest openers. And very, very simple to do. Um, again, seated, if you will. And then rolling the shoulders back, slightly tucking the chin. And next time you roll your shoulders back, take them all the way and back, okay? Now maybe you wanna go ahead and clasp the hands together or just leave them open and raise them up. Um, and you're just opening that heart and allowing yourself to experience having an open heart and breathing. Good chest opener. Now with your arms and back, there are other things that you can do. Uh, lacing together the fingers maybe if you want and then raising the hands up, that can be a good one. Just whatever you can do. And think about also a lot of our day can be spent kind of hunched over, computers, phones, that kind of thing. So the idea of opening up instead of caving in, but opening up that heart is very beneficial. Okay, so that's our heart chakra there. All right, now we're moving up to the fifth chakra. Okay, fifth chakra is the throat chakra, probably my favorite. Um, <laughs> because it has to do with uh, the throat, uh, larynx, speaking, all that kind of thing. Um, so in order to clear that chakra, we're going to do uh, two exercises. Um, the first one, and I, I think this is a very good thing to do, it's kind of like a primal scream. Um, and you can do it as in a seated motion or a seated position or however you care to. I think it works best seated because you're sitting up and able to breathe better. So first thing we do to clear the throat chakra is uh, we're going to take a nice, we're going to do this three times, take a nice deep breath in and then as you breathe out, let that breath come out as almost a primal scream, a, a guttural, <coughs> you know, just to let that air out. Um, and, and just kind of clear that energy, okay? It also relieves anxiety, frustration, all those things. So three times, and a nice deep breath in. And again. And a third. 
third time. <sighs> and it's very empowering, too. It feels good to get that, that scream out, if you will, or that roar. It feels like a roar. Um, what you'll notice, too, when you experience that, that feeling of, of doing something with what they call is very yang or yang, as in yin and yang, masculine, feminine, something like that is considered a high energy yang, a masculine. And what it does is it really gets your adrenaline up here, which can feel great. But again, it's all about balance. We don't want to be too far up here or too low down here. So to offset that, or balance it, I should say, uh, the next thing we're going to do for the fifth chakra here is the sound of om. Now in Sanskrit, um, the sound of om means peace. So as you take the breath in through the nose, and then you let the breath out, try making an O shape with your mouth. And as that air comes out, try allowing the sound of OM to come out. We'll do that three times. OM. And again. third time. Okay. And we have just sent uh, the world and ourselves peace. So that's what that one's about. Uh, chakra color here is a deep cobalt blue. Um, I always say it's kind of like to thy known self be true or true blue. It's about, um, so this is not just about your, your physical throat, larynx, all that kind of thing. It's also about speaking your truth and also um, knowing when not to. Um, I'm kind of connecting with now nowadays, it's about being truthful and being honest, but also in, to be kind. Um, so, so those are some opportunities um, for that fifth chakra. Okay, so fifth chakra, now we're up to sixth chakra. Um, sixth chakra is known as the third eye. It's in between the eyebrows. Color associated with it is a deep, deep uh, indigo purple. Okay, um, has to do with physically your eyes, um, headaches, migraines, things like that. That's how you can tell that chakra's out of balance. Um, the way to balance that chakra, I'm going to show you a pressure point that we can do, but it's also um, about meditation um, and going within, listening to your own intuition, listening to that deep, wise voice within you. Um, it's different than the fight or flight one. That's a gut feel. That's more almost usually in those immediate moments. This one is a little bit more intuitive, uh, one of wisdom. And again, we're having great opportunity to reconnect with that. So, a great way to connect with this chakra is very simply, um, you can lace your fingers together, um, and then the thumbs you want pointing together towards yourself. Indexes, if you want to, you can have them collapsed or pointing straight up. And then basically what you're doing with a nice long spine is tucking your chin and putting those thumbs right in between the eyebrows. Okay? And breathing. And our intuition sometimes uh, speaks to us through our dreams, maybe noticing your dreams a little more, keeping a dream journal. There you go. All right. Um, so, as you can see, we're making it from the tip of the torso all the way up. The uh, seventh chakra is at the crown of the head. Um, so there's a couple different things that we can do. Um, we're going to do an inversion. Um, again, head lower than the hips or the knees. Um, and I'll show you a couple extremes, one that's a little softer, a little gentler, and another one that's um, a little bit more 
uh, intense or a little bit more challenging, shall we say. All right, so um, seventh chakra has to do with, uh, it's the soft spot of your head when you're a little baby and you're born. It's That's that last spot that hasn't quite, you know, sealed over yet. Um, and it's that crown of the head. Um, if you have ever seen Renaissance pictures, they had the uh, kind of like a holy halo, a kind of like a glow coming out of this part of the head. Um, again, it's that crown chakra. It is said to be the gateway um, or the opening, if you will, between us as human beings and the ethereal, um, that which is on high. So, uh, color associated with it is bright, bright white light. Um, it can also be a, a light lavender color. And the way to uh, help that chakra can be in an inversion. So, all right, an inversion. Again, we go ahead. And very simple way to do it would be to come down onto your elbows, kind of tuck your chin, and then allow that crown of your head to point down toward the earth. Now, if you even want to make it even simpler, you could go back in that child's posture, if that helps you. And if you're looking for something a little bit more intense, um, you can you could try down dog if you want to. I'll show you down dog. Um, hands starfished, fingers far apart, arms down on the mat. And I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it all in the video here. But you're hooking your toes into the mat, and then it's bottoms up, okay? And so that crown of that head is right down toward that mat, okay? Now, another way, if you're not a fan, of, especially if you have wrist issues, and you're not a fan of down dog, and a lot of people are, you can do what is known as a half head stand. So what you're going to do is just bend your elbows, lace your fingers together, now, you can be right here on your knees and just tuck that chin. And that can be your um, closer to being a, a child's posture, prayer posture, or the half head stand, hooking the toes in the mat, straightening the legs, bottoms up, tuck that chin and have the crown of that head pointing all the way down to the mat. And you breathe. If you want to, maybe even alternate bending the knees here getting a stretch on the back of the legs. Okay, nice deep breath, and down we go. All right, so we've got all seven of our chakras, all nicely balanced. So um, now we can do a little bit of a chakra exercise. Um, it's a meditation of sorts, and if you want to, if you prefer to, be resting, lying down, feel free to do that, seated, whatever feels best to you. So, I always say to breathe, relax, soak in the, soften the focus of your eyes. And as you breathe, feeling your connection. And just allowing your mind to quiet and your body to relax and your spirit to connect. As you take your next deep breath, and if you see a particular, particular color, allow yourself in your mind's eye to remember what that color is. And keep breathing. And after a few moments, or however long you choose to do that, Allowing yourself uh, to maybe reflect back on, okay, what color did I see? Um, and I usually, when I'm speaking and teaching a class, I usually see the color blue, um, such as the fifth chakra, because I'm speaking. <laughs> but this time, interestingly enough, um, I saw orange, and um, which is actually my favorite color. And I realized it's probably about creativity. I've had to be a little bit more creative um, instead of the way I'm used to teaching yoga in the wonderful studio and everything like that, I had to get a little more creative um, in how I was putting this together. So I saw the color orange. Whatever color you saw, or sometimes the universe will allow you to 
keep on seeing particular colors being drawn to them. That can be that chakra or chakras speaking to you. And maybe it's that chakra saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm wanting your attention. I need a little bit more balance. Or, hey, I'm glad you're giving me attention. Um, that's kind of what I got when I saw the orange color. Um, you know, hey, thanks for being creative with me. You know, that kind of thing. So that's uh, a little exercise that you can do in your daily life or in your more meditative moments to connect with your chakras. Um, as we go ahead and um, come to a conclusion, I did say that we would do a mind-body-spirit uh, practice that will send good karmic energy um, to those we'd like to send positive energy to. So, And that was something that we did at the beginning. So um, right now, um, what we're going to do is allow ourselves to connect uh, with those that we want to send good energy to. So allow yourself to see your dedications in your mind's eye. And what we're going to do is three times, we're going to take air in, take um, a good deep breath in, and then imagine that you're infusing that breath with positive energy, positive energy that we've created now. And then in your mind's eye, see your dedication and blow that breath out. And that's your yoga air meal, sending positive to those that you believe need it. So connecting with that energy, with who our dedications are, take your first breath in. Infuse it with that positive energy. See your dedication and blow that energy out. And another deep inhale. Infusing it with the pause, positive. See your dedication and release. And third breath in. Again, seeing your dedications and release. Good. Know that this energy will be felt, it will be received, and it does make a difference. And now to conclude our practice, we'll check in again with our mind, our body, and our spirit. And this time, let's start first with our spirit, our soul. So once again, as you breathe, allowing yourself to go to your own heart, your own emotions. And if there are words, feelings, or images themselves that show how you're feeling, go ahead and connect with that energy. And if you want to, maybe reflect on if it's any different than it was when you first began. Just breathe and be with the energy. And then gently, when you're ready, allow your awareness to travel to your body, your soul suit. See how you're physically feeling. If you want to, reflect on is it any different than it was earlier. Um, that can be neat to notice any um, transformations. So just feeling your physical body, maybe scanning head to toe or the different organs. And with yoga, sometimes it's not what we feel, it's what we don't feel. Sometimes we just feel that relaxed feeling, that absence of stress. So being mindful of that, just connecting with your physical And when you're ready, allowing awareness to travel to your mind. And let your thoughts come back to you and you to them. And noticing if that content and or energy has changed in any way. And just breathe with it and be with it. And I know something that um, I was thinking about the other day. Um is about the act of, of being kind, you know, um, so symbol for, you know, we have peace symbol and victory symbol, and maybe the symbol for kind is uh, kind of a makeshift K, about being kind, and uh, a, kind of a C shape with a slash through it for criticism. Um, be kind instead of critical, okay? that helps to shift that energy too. That's a practice that we can do that's, again, for K, good karma. 
Um, so as we go ahead and go forth, um, and I hope to see you again in these videos and in this practice and share practice with you. I hope to get a little bit better at it too. I'm not quite used to doing it this way. Um, I ask all of us to take a deep breath in and open up as you exhale to the healing of mind, body, and spirit that we would be our best self, our reason for being here. Namaste. And in case you're wondering what namaste means, um, it's one word in Sanskrit that means a lot of words in our language. It means the best and the highest part of me honors the best and the highest part of each one of you. So to you I say namaste. All right. And uh, take a blessing from the chime and carry it with you in your heart. Let it bring you much peace, much health, much protection and prosperity, all abundance of the universe as you breathe. Okay. All right. Take care. Be blessed. Thank you.